Hey everyone, welcome to Birds of a Feather. Today I'm doing something I've never done before and that is a paint pour. So what I have here is, um, it's very different from paint pours I've seen online which uses acrylic paint. I'm actually going to try this with Dixie Belle chalk paint. So I've got a whole array of just sort of rainbow colors here. I've got this blue color called the Golf, Honky Tonk Red, Pure Ocean, Amethyst, on the bottom here, Colonel Mustard, Fluff, Midnight Sky, and Peacock Blue. And then the name of this one escapes me. I don't have a label on it anymore. So I'll be using this cheap dollar store canvas. I'm not sure what size it is. I'll get you the measurements on that later. And what I have here is also from the dollar store. It's just a box. And I have these um, triangular shaped slats of wood that were cut on the table saw. I've just put some painter's tape over it in case there's any drips. I can just keep that clean. And what I'm doing now is I'm just taking some painter's tape and I'm folding it back on itself. I'm just going to insert that into the divot here where it does up. And then I'm just gonna lay that into the divot and press it down. Now, when I'm painting on my little canvas here, it can drip down into this tray and I can save my work table. So another few things I'm gonna be using is some flood flow trawl and possibly some water if I have to thin it out a little bit. I've also got a variety of mixing cups here and this particular one has a lid. I also have a set of mixing cups that actually has measurements on it, which will come in handy so that I can get the proportions right. Since this is the first time I'm doing it, um, I think I'm gonna measure instead of winging it. Um, what I also have here are just some droppers. And then if I wanna put paint drops on, I can control it better with a dropper. So I've got a few of those. So I'm just gonna mix my paints, get set up, and we'll be back to do some sort of a pattern here. I've started to mix my paints and I've got all sorts of pretty colors here, a rainbow selection. And basically what I'm doing is I'm measuring out two parts of Floetrol in this uh, graduated measuring cup here. And then I'm going to add my paint. So it's two parts Floetrol and I'm putting in one part paint. The handy thing about these cups is that the measurements are on there. The thing I don't like about these cups is that the bottom isn't flat so the paint doesn't mix too well. And these particular cups are specifically for paint pours so that surprises me. The other thing I don't like is that the graduated measurements are on the inside and the paint gets caught. It's also difficult to see the measurements on the side. You have to get right at eye level. And because they're the same color as the plastic, it's difficult to see. So I'm just stirring it up. And then what I'm gonna do is, I've got these paint canisters because I need just tiny amounts. I'm putting them into the canisters and sealing it up and it's a nice tight airtight fit. So I'm just going to pour this into my container and continue mixing. Now that my butterfly is cut out, I'm going to go ahead and stick it down onto the canvas. And what I'll do is I'll just peel back one of the corners here. This is probably the trickiest part of this, is just peeling back the corner. I'm just going to position it where I want it, try to get it straight. That's looking pretty good. And then I'll just go ahead and stick it on the corner, and then I'll bend it back. And then I'll just go ahead and stick it down. Just 
just going to peel back as I go. Try to get this started here. Try not to get any air bubbles in it. Okay, now it's down on the canvas. You probably can't see it because it's also white. What I'm going to do is I'm going to brush the background and it's going to leave the outline for me so that I can then come along and I'll take some of my black and then outline the perimeter of the butterfly and we'll move on with our beautiful colors. For the background I'm going to use three colors. I've got Pure Ocean, The Gulf, and Fluff. So I'm going to start with Fluff at the bottom here. Just going to dip a palette knife in here, get some onto the canvas. And I'm just going to spread it along. I'm just going to wipe it on the towel here. And I'm going to dip into my next color, which is the Gulf. And again, I'll get some onto my palette knife. I'm just going to scrape it along. Probably got just a little too much there. Okay, and again, I'm going to scrape that right off, close that up, and I'll open my last color here, which is Pure Ocean. And again, I'll just dip in. and get it right onto the canvas. Now what I'm going to do is just mist a little bit. And I'm just going to blend the colors together. I'm just going to come onto the side of the canvas here with the brush. Do along the top. There's quite a lot of paint on there. Come along the side here, and I'll just come along the bottom. 
I'll just miss the brush just a little bit more. And I'll just blend it out. Okay, I'm gonna go wash the brush out. I'm gonna let this dry. Then we're gonna come back to do the paint pour in the center area. Um, and just before we do that, we're gonna peel away the butterfly mask. The background is now dry, so I'm going to peel back the mask that I have on here. I'm just gonna use a pin to help me lift it. Maybe I'll go from here. I already started this. I did get some bleed through, but I don't think that's going to matter. Okay, so now I'm going to add some white paint and um, the colored mixes that I did the day before. And we're going to do a pull chain technique where we add it around the perimeter and then drag the paint. So I'm hoping this is gonna work. It might have been a mistake to um, mask this off and do the background first, but we'll see how it turns out. It's uh, at the very least a learning experience if it doesn't work. And if it does, then I can just use it moving forward. I'm gonna start with a base layer of white. I'm just gonna spread some onto the canvas. and I'll just spread it around. Just add a little more where it's needed. I'm just trying to make sure there are no dry areas here so the paint can flow over. Okay, so now I'm gonna add a black outline. I don't know if I'm gonna need this tip here, but let's just see how this works. Okay, so now I'm going to start adding some drops. I'm going to use this eyedropper here. So I'm going to set that one aside. Now I'm dipping into some orange. Now some yellow.
gonna put a little bit more, hmm, I think red. Now for the chain, and I did forget to put some water in a cup so that I could dump the chain in right after, so I'm just going to grab that and I'll be right back. Okay, I've just got a bigger thing of water here. going to turn this around I just want to add it along the black on the outside just want to be really slow with this. I'm just going to pull towards the middle here. That's really, really pretty. So I'm going to dump my chain into some water. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. Starting at the bottom here, the outside of the block. Okay. So I'm just going to pull towards the center. And lift and into the water it goes look how pretty that is next chain and again I think I'm going to turn this around want to drop it gently and make sure that you're getting right on the exterior of that black line. Okay, and again, I'm pulling into the center. So I'm positioning the pull chain at the bottom here. right around the black line. Make sure it hits the exterior of it. Just drop it right into place. Now I'm just going to pull towards the center. And do this slowly. And lift. And then I'm dropping my chain right into the water. If 
if you like. You could add another drop and just drag that through. Okay, if you think that there's just a little bit too much paint in the center there, um, I've got a trick for that. I've just got a syringe here. I'm just going to go ahead and just suck that paint up. Now I'm going to add more black in the center here. Just use the palette knife to, pal to puddle the paint where you'd like it, just moving it. The nice thing about putting down that mask is that you've got a bit of a line here that you can't really go beyond. So you can just push the paint out to where that is. And I just have a little bit of bleed here, so I'm gonna to try to push that back. I might have to do a little bit of touch up. Might just add just a touch more black here. I just don't want any of the white to show. And that's what's great about this tip, is you can really get into the fine spots here. Just adding a few dots of white. Okay, I'm gonna call that done. I don't wanna fuss with it too much more. I'm gonna let that dry. And uh, when this is finished, I'm gonna put a coat of clear over it. Now, I don't have a gloss finish and I really do wanna put a gloss finish on this. So I might just wait to do that. You might just see it as is when it's dry. But uh, for my first pour, I'm pretty happy with it. If you like, you can drag a little bit of this black through. Okay, there, I'm calling that done. I'll bring it around and show you a close up. And there it is. So pretty. I just love those rainbow colors. I don't think I could be happier with my first pour. And you know, to tell you the truth, guys, I didn't really know if you could do this with chalk paint. I've seen so many tutorials with uh, acrylics on the net, but not really anything with chalk paint. So I'm just so pleasantly surprised and happy with how this turned out. Once you're done your paint pour, be sure to get any of your utensils into water right away so that they can be cleaned. Make sure you get the lids onto everything. 
And the one thing I really love about using wooden stir sticks is that I now have a record of my paint colors. I can just let this dry and then I can write on the colors and I'll know for next time just exactly how they're gonna look on my canvas. And lastly, be sure you get the lids onto your little containers here. I hardly used any of this paint, so I'll be able to, um, I guess, mess around with this and do a few more and um, have fun with it. Thanks for watching. Join us again soon for another flip on the fly. If you're interested in trying out some of these products, I'll leave links down in the description.